नमस्कार दोस्तों वेलकम टू वीनस एस्ट्रो वीनस एस्ट्रो में आपका स्वागत है वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू आर सीरीज वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट नाइन्थ लॉर्ड इनटू डिफरेंट हाउसेस बट बिफोर दैट वुड लव टू टॉक अबाउट द नाइन्थ हाउस एंड मेक श्योर दैट वी ऑल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट्स नाइन्थ हाउस एंड वॉट ऑल थिंग्स दैट वी शुड लुक फॉरवर्ड वेन वी आर लर्निंग नाइन्थ अबाउट नाइन्थ लॉर्ड बिफोर दैट द इज अनाउंसमेंट दैट मंथ ऑफ अप्रैल और मे April end or May first week, I'm planning to have meet up in Pune and Mumbai. One day in Pune, one day in Mumbai. I'll be uh, throwing the form uh, through community post. You can show your interest and what we did last time. I'll be communicating, but this time I'm going to make sure that I set up the venue initially, and could be a a, a hall somewhere booked in a hotel or something like that. So that's easy. It's it's easy for you, everyone. Uh, last time there was like. people were struggling to find the place but yeah having said that let's move on to our topic ninth house uh where to start let's start with ninth house being as a dharma house part of the trine and i always say when you are looking at the trine divide your age based on the age that you have this life into three parts for example if you have 60 years of age that is purna yu for you Divide into three parts: twenty, twenty, twenty. First twenty you can look at from lagna. Second twenty from fifth house, and third twenty from ninth house. So from forty to sixty you can look at the how much wealth you will have, and all those things related to your happiness and everything from the ninth house itself. And this is how you can make the center different point points uh, as center and look at the the things that is going to happen in your life. this is dharma trine this this uh, tells us that hey we need to follow dharma first we need to understand dharma and then lot of karkas will be automatically clear when i say dharma it is very clear that i'm talking about set of rules and why set of rules i'm talking about religion i'm not talking about spirituality because spirituality there is no rule there is only one rule god is there we need to just follow what god has said and we need to worship god that's it and it's your own, own way your own choice to worship god in a different way and based on your religion and belief system but dharma is set of rules for each religion there is like set of rules people have created over the period of time make sure that uh, making sure that the, the people like us they are following that set of rules to have a wonderful life similarly if you look at that within the family father plays that rules fathers create the father they they create the set of rules and we all follow that and that is betterment of uh, for that is for a betterment of our life so it means when we are looking at father we are relating with the dharma and also with government because government is also same creating set of rules for us it's also for boss who is coming up with the rules or who has the rule book which we need to follow to ensure that we are doing good so what does it mean ninth house not only dharma it's also about your father your boss your government all these different things that you can look at from ninth a house ninth house is also house of travel see when when i say travel 3 12 9 and uh, 7 this is really important for traveling you can travel abroad or not that you need to assess ninth house and ninth lot see if you look at fifth house is pura punya first house is lagna for that fifth house is pura punya what you have done in the past past life what you have accumulated good and from there fifth to fifth is nine that is the house of bhagya that is also gain from 11th house house of sanchit karma so it means everything that you have done in the past good or bad will get reflected in the ninth house and through ninth lord uh, placement and the condition of the ninth lord that how much bhagya that you have good or bad bhagya everybody has so bhagya or durbhagya ninth house a uh, fifth house we also look at for your grandfather and grandfather when we say that is the next is father ninth house so what does it mean as i said that something from past coming up that is grandfather then passed on to the father that is your bhagya so you need to correlate and also fifth house is your children so your bhagya your fortune is nothing but uh, it's also related with your future so fortune is past as well as future what com- what is coming from past and what is there in the future stored in the future because that's the fifth house for your first child or the progeny itself you take it like from there the pura punya house is the ninth house uh son is karka of father son is also bhagya fortune 
uh, son is also religion, as I said, set of rules. Then this house is uh, owned by Guru, Jupiter. And that is teacher. I'm talking about Guru. And when we talk about Guru, it's all about blessings. I always say Guru means someone who is ready to sacrifice, who is blessing others and sacrificing his or her own life to make sure others' life, lives are good. So that is the real meaning of Guru. That is the real meaning of Jupiter. That's the reason wherever Jupiter looks, aspect I'm talking about, I'll discuss about the aspect, how to understand the, the different aspects of uh, the Guru. Wherever he aspect, you get good result. Because that's how Guru behaves. That's the nature of Guru. Guru is also connected with God. Why? Ninth house and the twelfth house is owned by Guru. And in, in Hindi, there is a, a kind of poem we say or a doha, Guru Govinda Ukhade, like both are you know, Guru and God, both are standing and then Guru is saying that, hey, Guru is teaching us that who is God. It means for us, the first God is our Guru. Guru. So we need to worship Guru. That's the really important. Do you want to access Bhagya? Make sure that you start worshipping your Guru. That is really important and Guru doesn't mean that you have taken Diksha. Whoever is coming in your life and giving some good knowledge or any kind of knowledge, they all are your Gurus. Respect them. That's really important. Then comes Venus. Without Venus, we can't even think of Moksha because 12th house is the exaltation place for Venus. That is really uh, also really important because Venus is for all this uh, different luxury and, and the pleasure and everything. But Bhagya is also related with Venus, especially for your uh, spiritualism and, and travel, especially ninth house travel. Ninth house, Mars is there for adventure. Mars is taking care of the being as a karka of adventure. So if you are interested in the adventurous sports and all those things, there is some relation with uh, relationship with the Mars there. And when I say adventure, that doesn't only mean adventurous sports. This person could be really excited starting something new, forming connection with the third house. It means whenever this person is starting new, he's getting excited. That's also definition of adventure. So what does it mean? When I say adventure, you need to see the relationship with the different houses from where this uh, Mars is connected, sitting in the ninth house or being the ninth lord. And then you can say which, like, what kind of uh, adventure sports or, or something like that where that person is getting excited. So that is really important. See, this is Maran Karak Sthana for uh, Rahu. This is Guru's house. We know Guru Chandal Yoga. I don't like this term itself, Chandal. This is like, I don't know how many thousand of, uh, thousands of years back somebody defined it. But personally, I don't uh, like it. What does it. What does it mean? See, for Rahu, it's the material world and Rahu wanted to access everything. So Rahu's desire, we all know. But Guru is there to guide you. And he doesn't want that kind of guidance. He's not interested until unless... Rahu is Atma Karak in your uh, uh, chart. Now, people can debate that they don't consider Rahu as Atma Karak. We consider, I consider. Whatever that I have learned, I consider. And the reason is, Char Karaka is the movable Karakas that every life that you get. And the planets, they have desire to become that Karaka. For example, this, this life, Jupiter could be Atma Karaka. Sun could be Atma Karaka for, for different people. And when it comes to any kind of desire, movable things, we can't keep uh, uh, Rahu away from that. And that is the reason we consider Rahu as uh, char, uh, as part of Charkarka. And if Rahu is your Atmakara, be happy. It means your soul is running behind Moksha. But the challenge is that Rahu Mahadasha or Ketu Mahadasha is going to give you immense pain. It will teach you so many different lessons that you will understand the value of the spiritualism, and we'll start moving on that path. Ninth house, we need to understand different argalas. Because whether you have access to the bhagya or not, or who is creating obstacle in terms of accessing the bhagya when you're trying to access the bhagya, it will be, uh, one can understand through argala. Now, look at second house. From ninth, second is tenth. Fourth house, from ninth, twelfth is the fourth house. Then fifth is the second Argala, that is first house. And then take 11. 
that is seventh house. So it means 10, 12, first and seventh. These are the houses where planet sitting has interest in ninth house, in your bhagya. If malefics, debilitated planets are sitting, they are going to create challenges. You need to do remedies. Catch hold of the devata that once you understand, I always say, go to devatas rather than going to stone or something else. Devatas will guide planets to give good results. So that's important. So second house is house of karma. And you know, when Saturn is sitting in the ninth house, it also shows, oh my God, what is this? Okay. This also shows what all that you have done in the past life. See, when it comes to pending karma, we look at 6, 8 and 12. And then all that permutation combination, where is the Lord? Who is sitting there? Which all relatives are there? What kind of pending karma is there? Good or bad? Whether you are going to get happiness or pain. But past life, what you have done, can be seen if Saturn is sitting there. Why? Saturn is always about karma. Perform, do work. Being the 10th tenth, tenth Lord, by default, it's providing Argala on 9th house. Being the 10th owner. So this is really important that when one, uh, one like, let's suppose when we are analyzing ninth house and ninth lord, we need to analyze, do the assessment of Saturn. If Saturn is not well placed, having too many malefic influence, I can tell you with guarantee, you are going to struggle accessing your bhagya. Why? Because you are not doing the karma in a right way. See, different planets we can talk about. And also, before I get into the different planets, if any malefic or debilitated planet sitting in Lagna, that's the most risky placement. See, Lagnesh is, is influenced by where Lagnesh is, who is aspecting, and also what is happening in Lagna. Because if I'm Lagnesh, I'm outside my house, but everything is not well at my house. Obviously, I'll not be happy. Always disturbed. Won't be able to take good decisions and all that. So if a malefic sitting there in the lagna or the debilitated planet, and when I say malefic, two, three malefic, one I don't care about. Everybody has that problem. Then you will have challenge in terms of your uh, bhagya. And it's not only about bhagya. Then you will have challenges with government, father, boss, Travel, when you go for traveling, all those challenges, foreign settlement, you will struggle a lot. This is the clear-cut indication. And also look at where that planet is, which Argala house the planet is sitting, which planet is sitting, what kind of problem it will give. And all the planets are not going to give you similar kind of problem. That we need to understand. But yeah, looking at the different planets, I talked about Sun and Jupiter. They are good. I'm also... Uh, uh, let me talk about uh, Venus. I said for travel and foreign travel, uh, happiness, bhagya, everything. Venus is fantastic in normal condition. Mercury is good. Mercury is Narayan. See, we, two devatas we look from uh, Mercury. One is Narayan, one is Ganapati. Both devatas, they are really good at uh, this ninth house for communication, for writing. Uh, because this is opposite house of uh, third. So writing, publishing, authorship, all those things that you can look at from here. Bhagya, travel, business, everything. Why business? Third from seventh house. Though until unless you have the courage, you will not start the business. That you need to understand and also opposite of the uh, third house, new initiative. So if both houses are not complementing each other, it's hard for you to start a new business. You might take loan from the eighth house. You won't be able to invest. You won't be able to start a new business. So this we need to understand. Then uh, I talked about Rahu. Rahu is destiny breaker, not interested. The simple remedy for Rahu in ninth house, follow your guru blindly. One, worship Madhurga. Second, follow your guru blindly. Whatever your guru is saying, that should be like, okay, I'm going to follow. It doesn't matter whether good or bad. Any good guru will never give you guidance which can create nuisance. No. I'm very much confident about this. When it comes to Ketu, fantastic. Because you start with Dharma, fourth house, house of happiness. 
that is really good because spiritualism ketu is also co lord of eighth house sitting in the next house house of sustenance making sure that let's suppose if you are astrologer or you are into occult practices just you need to follow that uh, dharma your ketu will ensure that you get into that 12th house there is a straight connection because it's a house of sustenance where ketu is sitting and making sure giving the argala that you follow the dharma and everything there is a good connection between 8 and 9th always shows that okay this person is follow going to follow dharma what does it mean when you get when you get into consultations that person will take care of intentions are pure when it comes to ketu it's all about intentions if your intention is pure ketu will give good result if you are thinking about others trying to benefit others then this ketu will give fantastic result but if you are just thinking about yourself then that's a problem mars i talked about the problem with mars is the anger see if you look at ninth house mars sitting there who is getting courage your spouse back fifth house any connection that courage can lead to a situation where your spouse can cross the boundary and that can create problem in relationship and this can you can also understand your spouse getting lot of extra courage and anger and all those things what is going to happen eighth aspect on the fourth house house of happiness family life gone why because there was a connection with the fifth house shows extra courage to go out of the relationship and then everything got messed up moon is good for foreign settlement again moon there is a condition paksha wala it should be like strong number 1 uh that is the most important one paksha wala if that's the case foreign travel foreign settlement doing uh things related to food items finance and everything that is completely fine you can go ahead and do that no doubt about it if it is weak because of the paksha wala then you will have lot of challenges sun is karka so what is beauty here is when you will forget about your mind go with your will power which sun is providing you i always say sun moon combination it's all about your will power sun is there to take care of that will power then uh, any other planet saturn i talked about yeah and see you need to understand from mother's house this is sixth house so if your ninth house ninth lord is afflicted because ninth lord sitting anywhere getting afflicted the result that will come back to the ninth is not good your mother is going to suffer a lot from health standpoint that you need to check if your bhagya is not good for example it means your elder coborn is going to suffer in terms of gains and all you can rotate the chart and one house you need to come up with 50 predictions that obviously we teach in classes and all that i don't want to get into the 50 predictions how to do that i'm giving you idea so that you can sit and, and start doing that see for example fifth house somebody coming to you and saying that hey uh, when can i accumulate wealth simple question or when will i have wealth i'm not uh, having a good dasha period is not good you saw that fifth house fifth lord is forming connection with ninth and second second is wealth you can say one you have your first child bhagya will rise and you will accumulate wealth to prarabdha the question is prarabdha is sixth house why i'm talking about prarabdha see every house has prarabdha from every house you need to look at sixth house from ninth sixth is the second house it means the wealth that you will accumulate after the birth of the first child is coming from the past life if there is a connection with the 3 6 10 11 you can say obviously your free will is also there you are adding up but whether it is coming from prarabdha or free will this is how easily you can predict you can exactly that you can exactly you can see that when the uh, first child birth can happen this is the time period and then th there is a connection so you can say this dasha antar dasha this is really good for wealth accumulation this is how you need to form the connection 
See, when you are talking about any lord, when you look at any house, what is important is one house, one result is not going to work. You need to form the connection. Also, look at A9, Aruda Pada of 9th house. It will give you good sense where the Bhagya is. Look at 9th lord. Where is the where is the Bhagya? I'll talk about 9th lord uh, in coming videos, upcoming videos in different houses. But right now, you understand A9. If A9 is sitting in the fourth house, Bhagya is there with the family, your mother. You need to go and make sure that, okay, you are taking care of mother and family. Even you, you purchase a property and Bhagya will rise. Purchase a vehicle, Bhagya will rise. Connection with Venus. If there is a connection with the Venus, that Venus will ensure that you purchase a vehicle, Bhagya is rising. We are talking about ninth house. Let's talk about the Lord of the ninth house in Kalpurush, Jupiter. Jupiter is the Lord. And see, Jupiter is all about blessing, 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 blessing. No doubt about it. But we need to understand the different aspects of uh, Jupiter. And first, let's start with the exaltation place. I'm going to, not going to talk about the debilitation place, the bad things and all. Let's talk about good things. Any a Lord movement, I'll talk about all those, what all disease can happen and all those things. So, if you look at exaltation place, the question comes in, uh, to our mind, why Jupiter gets exalted eighth from itself, the primary house, the first house. And from second, it's in trine. Is there any logic that Jupiter is going to eighth and getting exalted? No. Lord Shiva has given this gyan to everyone and assigned the houses to all these planets. That's what personally I believe. People can counter me, no problem. But the reality is, Jupiter is getting fourth house. That is the house of moon. Where Jupiter moon together is a Gaj Keshri Yoga. I have explained this many times. Gaj Keshri is all about reading books, reading books, reading books. That comes under Viveda Yoga. Jupiter is so happy there. Why? Because mentally, Jupiter is in peace. And then, Jupiter is reading and taking care of the family. I always say house of happiness, overall happiness should be seen from Jupiter. Luxury and all, that is from uh, Venus. You are traveling, going to western countries and you are very happy, let's suppose, or moving to some other country. Your Venus should support, no doubt about it. Moon should support. But moon in 12th house, I have said, in good condition, you would like to serve your country. That's a different concept altogether. Now, this Jupiter sitting in the fourth house, also in trying to the moksha house, it means the Jupiter is interested in moksha. Okay, I'm talking about the ninth house. My family members are doing puja. Okay. Let me explain the three aspects. We know seventh aspect. Seventh, very clear that I'm interested in other, the house opposite to me. Obviously, I am ready to compromise and Guru is all about sacrifice and compromise. So no doubt, everybody understands the seventh house is good. Guru is sacrificing, giving blessings, done. What about fifth and ninth? If you look at the first house, from there, the fifth house is the first child. Where you mostly focus, the child. Wherever Jupiter will aspect, fifth aspect, that particular house, Jupiter will take care as the child. So your Jupiter is sitting in the ninth house, let's suppose, because you are talking about ninth house. Fifth aspect in Lagna. If you are not well, don't worry. Who is going to support? This Jupiter is going to support. He will take care of the Lagna like his own child. And that's where you are able to recover quickly with the blessing of Jupiter. What is ninth house? Ninth house is your father. Set of rules, government. Wherever the ninth aspect is there, Jupiter will look at that house and the person associated with that house like father figure. Ninth house Jupiter, looking at the fifth house, first child, you will look at, oh, I should follow this person. He's like my father. You will not say that, but you will follow that person like your father. You will respect that person like your father, like a government, like a boss. You believe in that person that, okay, the set of rules created by this person I should follow because he's the one or she's the one. 
who is really good at doing all these things. That's your conviction. Let's suppose eighth house, one house back and one house forward. I'll just talk. Rest you can just judge yourself. Eighth house. I was talking about the ninth aspect and the fourth. Go and check. People, those who have Jupiter in eighth house, and there is no malefic influence on the fourth lord or moon. Too many malefic. Then this person will respect his or her mother or think of his or mother always related to father. Mother itself is a father figure. Even mother is taking care like father, doing everything for, for her child. Not within the home, even outside home. You go and talk. Look at your chart if you have Jupiter in uh, eighth house. Your mother is like your father. You always look at your mother like your father. Go to tenth. Tenth house from their ninth aspect. Fifth aspect, let's suppose. Fifth aspect. Let's talk about fifth. Fifth is second house. When it comes to wealth, Jupiter in tenth house, you take care of the wealth like your child. And that is the reason people, those who have Jupiter in tenth uh, house, they are not going to waste their money like anything. No. Be cautious. Hey, they should not go wrong. They should be completely right. The way they treat their children. Ninth aspect, that is on sixth house. Sixth house maternal. Uncle, aunt, whoever. They'll see, okay, father, father, father figure. I should go to person. So let's suppose for whichever matter you think of your father as a go-to person. Similarly, you think your maternal uncle, aunt, whoever that you see that from, from sixth house. That's a go-to person for you. This is how you need to learn about different aspects. Not only Jupiter, all the rest of the planets. Those who have the multiple aspects. Then you need to form connection with, between different houses. For example, sixth house, Prarabdha, house of happiness, Bhagya. What you have in Prarabdha, if you are able to understand that, you will understand how much Bhagya that you have in this life. The kind of relationship that you share with your maternal will give you the hint in consultation chart reading that, okay, this person has this much bhagya or this much access to the bhagya. So bhagya or durbhagya. Then, from disease standpoint, this is really important because thigh area, thighs are there, so ninth house. If it is afflicted, then leg gone, bhagya gone. Differently able people, they have their different abilities and all. I don't want to get into that. That's an exception. In general, if you have this problem, ninth house, ninth lord afflicted, then obviously, pie is gone and then you need to take care of. Then uh, from 11th house, this is 11th. So ninth house will tell you how much you are going to gain in this life. Bhavad Bhavam from 11th house, 11th from 11th. This is really important. When we'll say, okay, when the gain will happen and all that, people will start looking at 11th house. Person is earning. There is no connection with Dasa Antar Dasa with 11th house, 11th lot. Still person is earning good. Why? Because there is a connection with the 9th house. Bhavad Bhav. Somebody said, why do you talk about Bhavad Bhav? This is really important to understand. In Jyotish, it has explained so many different places, the value of Looking at the Bhavad Bhav, the houses that comes under Bhavad Bhav. And that is the reason I explained in 12th house, 12th from 12th, bed placer is 11th house. People are thinking social circle and all. Then you can get to know that how that is related with bed placer and how can you figure it out, who is where and what uh, somebody is doing. But that, that, that's a different story. Lagna and ninth relationship, 5 9 relationship, this is really important. 5-9 relationship is like you are accessing your bhagya through Puru Punya. Puru Punya house is there, but I'm talking about 5-9 relationship. This is Namam Pancham Yoga. This is really important. Malefic in one side can block the other one. So you won't be able to access bhagya. This is like you can understand all these things. One thing that you should uh, evaluate. Ninth Lord placement from Aruda Lagna. If your ninth lord is not well placed from Arudalagna, 
then that's a challenge for you. You need to do remedy to access your bhagya. And for ninth house, go to D9 to evaluate how much bhagya you are carrying from the recent past. Sashti Amsa is all about what you have done in past lives and all. Recent past is D9. And then if you want to worship Devata, ninth lord you can worship. There is a way to figure out the Palan Devata and uh, Easter Devata. If you don't know all these things, worship ninth lord. And you can also look at D20. And uh, the planets in Trine, you can worship them. They will guide you to your East Devata. So if you're worshipping Ninth Lord, that will guide you to the East Devata. That's for sure. So this is all about Ninth House. house. And going forward, uh, videos will be released for Ninth Lord into different houses. Hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed talking about all these things. Very soon, we'll be meeting in Pune and Mumbai. I'll roll out the forms form for you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching the video. Namaskar.